All right, I'm continuing reading on this next one, man. Um, sometimes the men had to leave their villages and go work in St. Augustine. St. Augustine literally around the corner from where I'm at, man. It ain't that far. Building houses or carrying corn. Often they were not even paid. What that sound like? But when they were paid, they could get very useful things like metal, axes, hoes, and fish hooks. These tools made life much easier. The Timuquas that lived close to the Spanish had better access to these tools. I can see now. Maybe my people were some of these people, man. But I'm gonna bring out that Yamasi and the Seminole thing a little bit later, man, just to show you that most of these tribes that lost their names assimilated into um tribes like the Yamasee and the Seminoles and basically we collaborated together, man. The brothers and sisters created new families and joined together, but um um, unfortunately, being close to the Spanish cities also meant being closer to disease. These nasty people. Thousands of Tamuquas died and the villages were getting very small. The Spanish started moving their missions and the tiny villages into a line across Florida. This line made a road called the Camino Real, Camino Real, which connected St. Augustine with the Tallahassee area where the Appalachian Indians lived. Since there weren't enough Tamequas left to plant corn for the Spanish at St. Augustine, was, man, these people are devils. Appalachia had to do it. Damn, so they went from one people to another. The Tamequas and the missions guarded the Camino Real so corn could be carried from Appalachia to St. Augustine. Some Tamequas were servants of the Spanish in St. Augustine. Others worked on Spanish cattle ranches. Sound a damn sound. But uh, now that Tamuquas all lived in a smaller area, there was plenty of land for the Spanish to take for raising cattle. So how you think they took it? Meanwhile, the British had set up colonies in the Carolina. Now you got some other crackers. Not only the Spanish and the French, but you got the British. These other crackers come setting up shop. They, let me continue, they decided that they wanted to have Georgia and Florida too. They, they just decided... What if I go outside and just say, I just, I just want my neighbors. I want them. Get on your ground. Get on your knees. Let me continue. So they got the Yamasee Indians who had lived in South Carolina before the British moved in to raid the Spanish missions. So these Buffalo soldiers were, were Indians that basically conquered their own brothers. And, and these, these crackers basically had sides, but now they came together with a council and they all working together. That's when they start throwing us into the black and white titles. You was either this or you either that, black or white. Um, Yamsi destroyed the buildings and took thousands of native slaves, including Tamuqua, Apalachee, and Gwale. So these Tamuqua, Apalachee, and Gwale basically assimilated into the Yamasee tribe. And like I say, go and check out my other videos on um, Florida indigenous Indians. I'm going to be bringing out the Yamasee a little bit later. And I'm going to bring out the whole Florida Indian Wars, or should I say East Coast Indian Wars, from a PDF read, um, just to bring it out. Uh, they attack, let me continue, they can attack, attack the missions along the Camino Real so no corn or food could be taken to St. Augustine. Now that the Camino Real was safe, many of the mission villages moved close to the fort at St. Augustine for protection. Like I said, man, a lot of Spanish names here. Such names are uh, St. Augustine, one of them. You got Orlando. Well, I believe it might be an indigenous name, but uh, it is a Spanish name. Um, you got names such as the school I went to, Santa Fe. It's a lot of indigenous places with Spanish names, man. On that fuck shit. But let me continue. you, the Spanish knew the effort was going to be attacked by the British, so they ordered the Tamuquas to help them build a stronger one of the stone and coquina. They also called for Tamuqua men to come and form a militia army to fight the British. When the British attacked, the fort stayed strong, and it is still here today. Most of the Indians were killed or taken as slaves to be sold in the British Carolina, so it was misplaced Indians. But uh, a description or an image of uh, the the passage I just read, man, is this one. Wouldn't this be a Spanish fort? Aren't those native Indians that uh, built the forts made of stone right here? And coquina, I don't know if that's wood or anything. 
but I'm telling you, man, these kind of, yeah, we are who we are, man. But let me continue. Um, Spain, uh, excuse me. Finally, in 1767, Spain made a treaty with the British, giving Florida to them. Damn, so they basically just gave up. Man, let me continue. If you don't know, go and watch my videos on the Indian slave catalog showing you how African Americans. Uh, showing you how Indians turned into African Americans and Negroes, but um, the Spanish left the fort at St. Augustine and took the 89 remaining Indians to Cuba, not giving the information on the Yamasee that took the Appalachian Guale and Tamuqua Indians as slaves and basically probably assimilated, didn't say nothing about them, but let me continue, where they would be safe. <laughs> No more than 12 of these Tamuquas, no more than 12 of these Tamuquas, then period. But uh, in other information that I brought, I showed that no more than 12 of these Tamuquas survived. They didn't put it right here because they can't face they, the shit that they did to us. And let me go. Juan Alonso Cabale was the very last Tamuqua Indian. He died in 1767 and the Tamuqua culture died with him. Bang. None of the historic, man, I'm going to tell you straight up, if you go to the Gainesville, Florida library, you go to the public library downtown, by the, uh, behind, that's in front of the Matheson Museum, that shows you a lot of this information that I bring out, you will see Indian, they have Indian, it's basically like a, a library slash museum. But uh, none of these historic period, historic period Indian cultures of Florida survive today. But they got them in uh, the library downtown. When you go in there, you'll see that stuff in there. But let me continue. The Seminole were originally of Creek stock and from Georgia and Alabama. So the Seminole Indians who reside in Tallahassee and many other places were Creek and from Georgia and Atlanta, Alabama. Excuse me. They began to move into Florida during the 1700s, living in the spaces that Florida Indians had left behind. The name Seminole comes from the Spanish word Cimarron, which means something like renegade. Maybe that's the Maroons. Read the Maroons in your Bible, man. According to the 1990 census, 36,000 Floridians claim Native American ancestry, including 48 different groups. So you can claim Florid, uh, Native American ancestry and you still won't be federally recognized. They still won't say, oh, these are the Indians of such, even though the blood is in you and you are those people. Straight up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead, man. Let me run through these again. I'm going to show you some more information. This I'm bringing out this next. Florida's Lost Tribes on the Tamuqua. But this is the, look, these brothers got feather crowns, man. Afros. These are not Africans, brothers and sisters. These are the same Florida Indians today. These are them. And we all got different hair texture. Just because some got nappy, some got straight. Some, man, my hair is good as hell. My whole family, all of our hair good. Some of them got some kink core. And even my hair got the real kink core like lamb's wool. Like lamb's wool is the information. Um, excuse me, lamb's wool texture. But um, this is some, this images of, uh, I've been running through, this is something else, man. But these are Indians from the East Coast, from Virginia all the way down to Florida. This is us. And you see this crown? Hold on, let me show you. I thought it was supposed to be bigger. Um, it's straight. But, um, Damn. But okay, that's a little bit bigger, but just so you know, the, you see this crown on this brother head, these feather crowns. This is how you know that um look right here, right here you can't see what this dog you see the image right in front, he has the same feather crown on his head. This same brother that's the, the last, the first Indian that you see that's in front of this dog is the last image with a feather crown. 